Do you think you're a good man? I do. But I'll have to convince others. For me, my lust and hunger was for audience. Since the media is failing, the medium can hold up. I am the son of Chaplin. Hello, sir, and welcome to Film Companion. Thank you. Uh, in your career, uh, the action film has not been a very prominent genre. I mean, there have been films here and there like Vikram, Kurdi Punal, Tungavanam, Vetiadu Vilayadu, all of them, though it's more of a psychological drama. Uh, then you've had, now you have the, the two Vishwarupam films. Uh, but that's just a handful of films in over 200 films. Uh, what, did, this, did it just happen this way or, or you know, is, is it just no. something that, is there a reason you were not interested or? Vikram was a half-baked attempt. I wish somebody like Mani or Singitam had uh, directed that. It would have been a different film. But the market pressures at the time was to make a commercial film. They never understood the genre part of it. They simply wanted a film which had all had six songs, all had six fights. Oh, there should be a sister-in-law or a mother or something. They were fixed tenets with which... They would come and tell you. They, it must be there. Uh, and great screenplay writers who are not actually great, but uh, they, because of the virtue of their success, became uh, pundits of that uh, uh, thing and they were uh, the hegemony that we had to bow under. M many people fought, uh, the, one of the most tenacious fighters against that system was Mr. Balachandra himself, single-handedly till the younger flock uh, came around. He was doing the battle all alone. So, uh, and he was not an action uh, person. Both Sridhar and uh, they abhorred violence because one, we didn't know how to do it. It was tacky. And uh, they were intellectually uh, inclined. So, they are romantically inclined. So, they went the direction. So, we had only MGR for action or Mr. Jay Shankar. Right. No, no, nobody else. Uh, did. So that was not sufficient feed for such a young mind who is seeing uh, James Bond films right. and uh, Hitchcocks and other things. So we were all uh, wine to prove ourselves and uh, aching to see a film like that. And uh, we always thought the two predominant genres that were in our mind when money, many young filmmakers who became filmmakers and didn't become filmmakers, but they all spoke films. They, we all had two clear genres in mind. One was the mafia. Okay. And the other was this espionage. It never got realized. Love stories happened. Uh, thrillers happened. Wait until dark happened. Because it was all emulatable, but this meant money, this meant research, above all a receptive audience, which we didn't have. And I can't even blame the audience because the money bags were holding us by a very tight leash and much more the censors. Right. We had a censor board at that time. So to cross that, it became, I think we are late, Vishwarupam is late by about 30 years. They say that I do things in advance. People would have definitely seen this film 30 years back. You'll have to explain to them uh, the nuances of what is happening. Probably make it a little more uh, elaborate. But uh, with Vikram, I failed. As a matter of fact, uh, me and Mani were caustic critics of Vikram. He had a better vantage point because he didn't produce it or direct it. But I, in spite of having produced, written and acted in it, I felt I had missed the point b b diluting it for uh, Kodamakam. But there was always this thing. And this I wrote in actually 2006 or 7. Vishwarupam. Uh, but nobody bought or bit into that idea. So I, I was selling it. Some of the best thinking directors, they didn't. They didn't think there was anything to it at all. And uh, including Ravi Kumar, who takes on to any new genre that I suggest, didn't want this. And so it kept, and uh, again I tried selling this to uh, Mr. Nadi, But he rather preferred uh, uh, Manmada number to this. 
which was actually I, I did it because they wanted it. They are the money maker. I, if they had done it, they would have had a rocking success in the hand. But uh, anyway, so it fell uh, into my lap. Aburo Sadharal also fell into my lap like that. So I have uh, no complaints as such. But the complaint is a larger uh, spectrum complaint of how many ideas die like this on the table without even coming to the bleeding edge at all. Okay. Leave alone yeah. cut. <laughs> it doesn't make the first cut. Yeah. You just spoke about uh, Vishwarupam having been written about 2006-07 frame. So I have a question about that because Vishwarupam to my mind is a very special film because no film industry in the world to my knowledge has made an action film in which the Muslim hero saves the world. I, I mean I, I haven't seen this anywhere. The Muslim is usually the terrorist against whom the world has to be saved. Now, so actually when the ruckus, the political ruckus happened around it, you would think the Muslims would be for the movie because yeah. they are finally being represented in a positive that's light. What, that was shocked me in the sense because at 2006 it would have been a tepid ordinary thriller. But as time grew and things happened, something unique happened with this film because I completed the script in 2010 or 11, I don't really put 2010 or 9, I, I don't remember. But when we gave it for permission, suddenly everything quiet, went quiet because we wanted to shoot in summer because it's easier to shoot in summer and I didn't want to walk into winter in uh, New York. So, but we didn't get permission. And I had submitted the script in January, February and uh, February, I had, uh, I think February or somewhere around that time. And I, I was itching to shoot in May. But nothing happened. Then uh, I thought, why is it? And then suddenly something extraordinary happened. A line from my script actually happened in real life. Geronimo. Right. But I didn't name it Geronimo. <laughs> it was just a, a passing line. Probably I thought maybe they were wondering how the hell did he do that. And later on, what had not been there I could add. Mr. Obama himself announced the death of Bin Laden in, in my film. So our research was quite close to the uh, real, thing. real thing. And um, uh, there were many such sleeper cells. And uh, I wanted to buy uncle work for the intelligence. So I always wanted to depict it in, in its proper gut and gore uh, uh, reality, not uh, not about uh, uh, malls and uh, uh, shaken, not stirred martinis. So I wanted to go a little beyond and, and the actual w what you see in a Ludlum novel or a Patterson novel that, right. that goes deeper into the terrain. So that's what caused it. I mean, I was wondering if you were you were kind of concerned about the way Muslims are being represented and maybe Absolutely. this was... Absolutely. Okay, so that's, that was one of the seeds of the film. It, yeah, because I wanted a voice from the other side of the world. And it is not pro-Muslim at all. It's pro-part of the world. Right. Because it's a geopolitical thriller. And it is nothing new for India to talk for the world. Right. Uh, Khilafat movement itself is that. Right. Gandhiji, when you are saying, fight your war, what the... What is your problem with what's happening in the Middle East? Right. But he felt he was already a world citizen. And that, that's what it is. This is a geopolitical thriller. Every country is involved, including India. Right. This pond will, a pebble thrown on this end of the pond, will ripple across to Europe and America. Being a star and a great actor has obviously helped you fuse those two and, and given you the cloud to make a lot of the films that you really wanted to make. Do uh, you feel that you may have satisfied your hunger for pure cinema or good cinema more had you been in the, let's say, the Nasiruddin Shah space where you were known not as a star but only as a, as a great actor? No, for me, my lust and hunger was for audience. It's not personal, it's public. So I am the son of Chaplin. I am not the son of uh, Kurosawa, for that matter. I am not that intellectualized Bergman son. Right. I respect Bergman. I, I admire the tenacity of purpose and uh, his vision and all that. But I would rather be Chaplin's son. 
than okay. that. Uh, yeah. And I have no qualms about okay. calling Buster Gator my Chitapa. <laughs> so <laughs> that that that's the thing. I'm 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 of a different, slightly different ilk. But I think Keslowski is also like that. He understands uh, the larger cinema, but he wants to make that kind of cinema. Right. Because that is great aplomb and restraint right. at the same time. That's classic. I mean, uh, I mean that is emulatable, but I want I want to do this, going to more people. Plus, I guess in Tamil Nadu, we don't have a tradition of art cinema as such. At all. Right. And why fight against the tide and fail? I want an audience and I wanted to take Tamil cinema to another height. If Hindi cinema could do it, if you can make a Mughalyasam at a time when there were no uh, clear indication, there were no studios posing it, right. why not do it now when Gurudath could do it? But they all slowly watered down, probably the suicide, fall of Asif, suicide of Gurudath sort of scared other people from doing much. Still, Gurudhar did Achanak, right. which is that marriage which we liked, because it is the father of Rambo. Right. If you look carefully, the seed for Rambo is sowed <laughs> somewhere in uh, uh, India. Uh, you just spoke of uh, Gurudhar. I have to ask about Bahida Rahman, who is in Vishwarupam too. How do you think of casting her? And I just have to ask you, what is one of your favorite films of hers? Kagasya Okay. Yeah, How did you think of casting her? No, that's because one, I wanted a double version thing. Uh, who could speak both the languages and also uh, be a star, yesteryear star. Right. We were looking at it. Vajanti ji naturally would have been the choice. But she said, uh, I have promised my husband that I will not act in my film. But uh, that was the choice. But then we were thinking and suddenly Kagas Gay Fool is my favorite film and uh, then I just thought of the line Bhaktine Kiya Kiya Hasi Sitam and I asked her and she uh, also surprisingly agreed and uh, we had a whale of a time because we had uh, discussions about Kagaske Fool and I, I sort of squeezed out a compliment from her where she said I reminded her of uh, the techniques and the way I work reminded her of Guruza. I said that's because we were both dancers and we had a great time. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, your career has seen many transitions. You mean you, child actor to adult, uh, pre and post K Balachandar pre and post Sakala Kalavalon, where you you're, you're kind of you became a Masya star. Uh, you know, the Pushpak Nayagan phase, where you slowed down and decided to take it one film at a time. And then, you know, you can we say that the latest dividing line in your career is pre and post Big Boss? Because uh, there is, I mean, I was just wondering if this surge of this Kamal in the popular, uh, like in the memes and the other things, do you think that this is going to have a, like a repercussion on the way uh, uh, Vishwarupam 2 is, uh, is received because it was know. not there in, in the first part. My purpose of Big Boss is, is not like a transition from one career to another. I was, it was from one career to another strategy. I, I had decided on politics some time back, but I, I was looking at ways and means with limited resource that I have. I was looking at Mr. K. Jirwal and uh, trials and tribulations that he had. So I wanted to avoid those things. We had a discussion also. He came and met me. So I thought Big Boss would be the greatest platform available to reach the masses. To, to reach the masses. Because look at it, with the one lakh, hundred thousand people gathering, look at the cost involved. I drew uh, 300 times that every Saturday. And if I just get across two sentences worthy and uh, uh, it's not evangelizing as such but convincing. Right. If I could say two convincing sentences per week, it's worth all the trouble and that's how it started. Otherwise, I'm not a great believer of reality shows. I'm not even interested. Right. I don't watch those things. I'm more uh, history <laughs> right. kind of guy. After the Pushpak Nayagan phase, except the, except for the comedies that you did, the other films, they began to 
the perception was that they were a little a center that they were a bit for the intelligentsia because they were definitely deep films there were lots of philosophical ideas in them do you think big boss has kind of taken you back to the the way sakal kalavalo did did it take you Ab- past- absolutely right because they now they don't see a velunaikar they don't see uh, shakti vel guna or anything they don't they directly look into my eye and they know they are talking and at surprises uh, it's a mutually surprising uh, uh, intercourse right. where we are talking to each other for the first time like this and they like it and i uh, relish it on season 1 of big boss you know initially you got a bit of criticism and you took it uh, you know on the chin and you came up on the show and addressed that criticism directly Have you ever thought of doing something like this for the criticism you've released, uh, you've received for some of your films? No, no. That, 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 that's not a purpose because you see, uh, it's not that I'm saying customer is right, but he can be corrected right. with another film. Why fight over that film? He didn't like it. Right. So the idea is not to say I'm right. The idea is to make them say you were right at least. Right. that means the film after that will succeed i have never criticized criticism especially if it's constructive take it in the chin if it is not constructive it's a waste of time that person is trying to do a one up and ship show right. and i am not going to facilitate with the platform right 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 a hypothetical question had this been the kamal of the 1970s where you were no beginning to get known as an actor but you were not yet a big star Uh, and had a big boss like opportunity availed itself would you have uh, you know taken it up i would have but i would have gone uh, not in the right direction i would have started a zeotrop and uh, tried to take on avm studio reliance and stuff like that which would have meandered into all directions with my lack of experience but right now i think i have taken the right, right. direction and using the fulcrum to lift off a weight which i possibly cannot lift no politician could have pulled it off big boss is a big thing it is it, it's like the beer hall push <laughs> right, right, right like big boss the other big dividing line in your career is the, the your entry into politics now a lot of actors have opinions which they keep within themselves for obvious reasons uh at, at what point did it all burst out i mean there was a point when you joined twitter and then the big boss happened and you know like people began to hear more of you but did it all really begin uh, when the f- when uh, uh, when the events around the first vishwarupam happened see my my family is quite pers- 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 perceptive in that manner especially chandra hasan he anticipated my total dive into politics about 20 25 years back this was let's say in the 90s they were going to tell okay okay he said i don't like the direction you are taking because And of the of the tone of the film yeah the tones were slowly changing is it where are you going with this i said no i'm making a film and then when he saw mardan i come he understood is it is it going to be your last film maybe i said with this you are planning something why is it that you are pitching everything into this then he said are you thinking of politics i said oh, yeah what is wrong i mean my father was in it he said don't do it so he always brought me down in a rugby tackle <laughs> whenever i tried to what was his reason for not doing it he said you are not cut out for that don't go there it is i said who will clean the toilet then if it's all about fecal matter and hygiene who's going to take care of that hygiene is it at all one come and hyperbole you want you, you are worth much more i am I, i could believe it because it was self satisfying when you can agree with something right said about it but then again with virumandi my mind was set because they troubled me right virumandi had no reason to get into trouble right, right from the title it became a yeah. it is all because because they like my brother noticed that i had inclinations and i should be stopped right right and it started rolling from then on and i kept then they called me to join the party these things happened discreet yeah. messages were sent i was offered 100 crores what will i do with black money of 100 crores 
take it and yes it would have i had only about 6 7 crores of debt which rose to six times that afterwards because of my film right. i could have wrapped it up and settled it anywhere else i didn't but more and more it sort of invigorated me or enraged me so to say and it kept moving it is like how cho became a political analyst right he didn't want to. He was happy. He would have been a, another crazy mom, happily doing plays, right. living with friends. Probably have lived longer. <laughs> we don't know. But they kept pushing him. They kept pushing him. They made him start Tughlaq. Then they made him become more volatile uh, as a political critic by chasing him down. Right. Um, uh, he, I mean, he wouldn't have come to politics at all. I'm. Very similar to that, but only thing, I'm not going to sit uh, on an armchair and comment like Mr. Cho. I'm going to come into the bloody battlefield and take them on. And go do it. Yeah. One of the, the statements that keep recurring in your 80s and 90s interviews is, I am a limelight moth. Uh, and you've said it very unapologetically that, yeah. you know, that's something that you just yeah. wanted. Do you think you'll miss that aspect when you leave films as you've hinted you will? Limelight is fame, that's all. I call it limelight as an a allegory or a symbol. I still am. I want to be called a good man, known like that. How I deserve it is yet to be seen. I'm probably in the process of attempting to deserve that and die with that glory hovering over my head. That is how this moth will die. Do you think you're a good man? I do, but I'll have to convince others. Okay. Uh, if I don't believe in it, I won't even be asking for it. Well, I'll just settle down and be what I am. With many actors who entered politics, uh, they were just actors. Uh, so if they had to give anything up, it was just that one aspect of acting. Uh, but you literally, you know, have been a Sakalakala Vallavan in the sense that you've written lyrics, you've written screenplays, you've directed, you've designed makeup, you've you know, prosthetics, you name it, you, you know, you've done everything, you've even choreographed dances. Yeah. Now, each of these aspects satisfies a particular creative hunger in you, you know, that lyrics that, you know, this one, you know, where your dance background is satisfied by your choreography and all that. Now, have you thought about how difficult it is going to be for you to give up all this? I mean, how will, will that hunger just go away because you're directing it to another place? See, you think that it's dance that gives me the thing. Any kind of excellent execution of any form gives me that pleasure. Okay. And above all, learning a thing gives me the greatest pleasure. And learning language, again, is a thing, which I do. People don't know that I am, I'm a lyricist separately. Without, uh, I have uh, about 200 unpublished poems. To write 200, you need at least, uh, with that, my kind of pace, you need at least 20, 30 years. I've been doing it for 40 years now. 40 years of writing. I could still do that. And I do it. Now my friends say, you stop writing once a week now. Right. You're writing once a month. Three months since you wrote your last poem. They remind me, yes, I could write. I mean, this is, I mean, above all, Watching somebody do a great performance and understanding itself is as good as performing. This I've realized recently, right. past 10 years I think. A good performance, well done and if you know the artist. Like can you give an example? Yeah, I'm uh, uh, Shekhar Sen, uh, he did Kabir. It's so simple. It's all about talent. It's all about one man and the audience. And it works for me. No gizmos, no 3D, no <laughs> animation, nothing. But not that I'm looking down on animation and going harking back to live performances. But the, the sheer brilliance of versatile talent and how he showcases it is as satisfying it as if I performed it. It it moves you, literally moves you. So you're saying that your your talent is satisfied by other people's exhibition of talent. My talent, if, if, if I could raise the money 
I'll create what this industry failed to do and I will take the credit single-handedly and die in that limelight of creating one of the fantastic film schools of the world in Tamil Nadu. We should have done it. Is, because that, is that still a possibility? Yes, it's still a possibility. But I don't, I don't have to run the school. It's not the money we are talking about. The pride of an Alanda. We are the largest film producers in the world <laughs> next to China. And we also speak uh, English, unlike China. Right. And we speak it quite well, though with an accent. And uh, that's our thing. We can become international at a flip. Uh, I mean, flip of a hat, we could become international. And that's what we should produce. And we can, because it is a global village. If Microsoft can have their factory here, our film schools can be here. And that's my dream. And uh, that's nothing mean. It's much bigger than Vishwarupa. A general question, not specifically about you. Uh, is it possible today to construct a cinema career with an eye on a political career the way Mr. MGR did? Uh, because these are very different times. Do you think the audience will see a man singing Wondri Yankar Jadie or Buddha Yesu Gandhi Piranda, songs like that and kind of conflate it with the real person? Not necessarily, but you can make a Malcolm X. Okay. You can make that kind of a film or you can make a film like uh, a political uh, film like Vietnam, a documentary, and move people. It still has the power. It, it, it's a, the medium still can do it. it. Since the media is failing, the medium can hold up. Right. Because it's individual driving it. Of course, he will face much more pressure than the media. But it might slip through uh, unexpectedly. Right. But the media is being pressurized now. It's failing not only by virtue of its corruption, but it's failing also because of its uh, fear and deception. Right. Uh, Will people watch is one thing. Not only that, they'll be shut down. That amount of fear has come into the various wire pulling, trip wires. Big companies become smaller companies suddenly. Right. Right. And connections matter. So media is, the valor in the media you can't find a Rachner that easily in right. India. But it, no, I'm not saying that it, it will never happen. It has happened before, it can happen again in India. But medium itself is a larger perspective and it's even becoming more and more versatile and open. Uh, so, the Asanje is possible. When you say that you use Big Boss as a platform, the fulc that's a great analogy you gave of a fulcrum to kind of lift that weight. Uh, you, your next project is Indian too. Uh, and especially given that the first one was about cleaning out corruption. Uh, did you sign this film with an eye on your political career? Absolutely. But both the, the filmmaker and I concurred on that uh, uh, I mean, trajectory. Uh, that's why we agreed to be on that because he suddenly realized with all the uh, my he got the idea when he saw my tweets. Okay, yeah. and and that's how the thing that's happened. how the because I told him long time back to go at it. Okay, I, I wanted him to give me the uh, thing. I mean the franchise, so I'll continue. I had I had it ready as uh, fifteen sixteen years back. Right. I told him, but he said, uh, no, this, why should we try a successful film and goof it up? You know, there was in two minds. I know I'm, I'm voicing the, the fear of many film lovers when I ask you this. Uh, you know, for someone who knows somebody so much about cinema, for somebody who considers so, uh, himself a student of cinema, uh, there's so much we still want from you. Uh, and you're, you're, you're definitely giving up films, you're saying, as in participating to, in films. To, is, is, is that something that... That that is going to eat away at you. That people are still going to want that that Kamal at some point. They, they might want. I want my dad. I want Balchandra and Nagesh now. But uh, <laughs> you can't ask for it. It's both logic and logistics right. that's going to uh, stop me from doing right, that. Right. But uh, being a student of cinema, I was just talking to you about creating more students right, right. for for mm -hmm. cinema and uh, teaching need not be done personally. If you're uh, a, 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 
a catalyst right. in doing that, that's good enough. Right. This, and finally, I just have to ask you this. Your, uh, a lot of actors come, they have a phase of hits and then they fade away and this has been happening over and over and over. But here you are, you're still here, despite all your hits, all your flops, despite trends changing and everything, how do you explain your longevity? Because above all, I'm a film fan. That explains it? That's that, as simple as that. I love cinema more than myself. And you think people sense that in you? They sense that because they love cinema too. They, they, they recognize a co-cinema buff. Okay. And that's why they make them, uh, they sit with me or allow me to sit with them. Right. And I could carry on for another 20 years in various roles, but I have work to do. You'll have to excuse me. <laughs> All the best for your work and for Vishwarupal too. Thank you. Thanks.